Um, you know, I don't know that we properly noticed the community that this was going on. The elimination of the Council of the Whole was slipped in at JNA uh, with really no notice to the public. They had to be watching very closely that this was going to be happening because it was not part of any previous agendas. That being said, I think we uh, need to send it back to JNA. We need to hear from the public. I, I w would ask for a 30 day referral. Motion on the floor is to refer for 30 days. Is there discussion on referral? Chair, recognize the council member from the 10th district. You know, um, there has been, uh, the first meeting you had two landlords who spoke against it who are known to all of us, okay? And then 30 days later, with great hullabaloo and tape over the mouths and placards, you get four speakers who really all they offered was intimidation. That's all they offered. Two of them went so far as to tell you they like our soapbox. And I would recommend to those four the way to do that. I've, I've been opposed in my last four elections. You want the soapbox, you, you get 20 signatures, and you go out and you knock on the doors and so you see how you fare, okay? One of the speakers on Tuesday night did that and only got 18 votes in the primary, thus achieving the only record of only person ever getting less than they had submitted on their petition. All right, the public, there are 50,000 people in this community and you've heard from seven and they didn't do anything to advance this debate. Now, Mr. Becker came up with the five idea and that was to allow flexibility. Now, last month, we accommodated your desire to have a sunset provision, so this expires in June. You pulled a Sweeney on us and you voted against it after we adopted your amendment. All right, but I think we did it in good faith. I don't think referring it's going to gain you anything. In fact, it's gonna muddle the waters because I think, Mr. Matty, am I right? It is now a duly constituted rule, rule of the city council and would take two thirds to repeal it. Mr. Attorney, would you like to comment on that? It takes a two thirds supermajority to enact a new rule. What was done right now is a reconsideration which simply requires a majority vote. So right now it is- Reconsi Reconsideration would be 50%, but to change the rule would require a two thirds vote, would it not? Your rules require a two-thirds supermajority vote to enact or change a rule. Correct. So we have an existing rule which says no public hearings as of January 1st for a trial period through June, June something or other, and it would take two-thirds to change that. Correct. Right. So, um, I, and you can't knock what you haven't tried, and I think we need to try it. I think this is, I've been around here a long time. This is the biggest single advance in governance. This is the biggest single advance in governance here that I have yet to witness. Now the bar is pretty low for that because we really haven't done anything in my time here to improve governance. So this is not only a significant thing, but it's probably the first. Um, and so I don't know that anything is to be gained in referral, nothing. Uh, and I think frankly, we should try it. And if it doesn't work, then we can repeal it. Chair, recognize the council member from the 8th District. Thank you very much. Um, I was here in 1968 as a reporter, not in this building, it was in the old city hall, and they did not have public hearings at that time. That was something that came in the late 1960s and early 1970s as a response to the uh, uh, activism that followed the Vietnam War. And the council, but before that, the public, uh, public would have about one chance a year, I think it was on the budget, talk about the budget, and then it was a unified school district, or a, uh, uh, in a, it was unified school district, and so that had to have a uh, hearing on the school budget as well. And these things would go until three in the morning, and they were pretty ugly. We have great opportunity for the public to address its government here, more than enough. And we have done a great deal more than the Wisconsin legislature, the US Congress, or you go to one of the neighboring townships 
where they don't have committees, they have one meeting a month and that's it. You have to show up for that one meeting, that's your only shot at it as a constituent. And that's all they get here. We get, if you have a zoning matter, you gotta show up for the uh, plan commission, JNA, the committee of the whole, and the council. And you saw as an example of the confusion of the public, this uh, guy who wanted his uh, taxi license hearing and the shock on his face when Mr. Becker told him he had to come back tonight. He thought that he had done enough for this month and that he, he was gonna just come back next month. He didn't realize he had to show up again tonight to make sure that his matter got through. And we've seen that so many times with people who wish for a rezoning or they, they want something that uh, they're coming back time and time again. And it's time as, as Council Member Farmer points out to uh, do some improvements here in how we do business. It will also require, it's not just a simple matter of uh, changing, not having a committee of the whole, but we're gonna have to place more trust and reliance on our committees or there more participation in our committees. Right now, who among us knows intimately all the details of all 70 or so pieces of legislation we have in our desk? I bet we don't. I bet we have to, for the uh, finance stuff, we turn to the members of the finance committee for guidance if we're not we're concerned about them. If you know it already we're heading that way, it's time to do it. And it's it gives respect to our committees, it gives respect, more importantly, yet to the public that relies on us and is confused by the way we do business. I hope you do not ask for a referral. Chair recognize a council member from the third district. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in putting in the uh, sunset clause, I, I did that because I think this is uh, not the way we should be doing business. And the sunset clause would make it easier to repeal it and go back to the way that we were. Taking away the public's voice uh, is not a good thing. Not everybody in this room goes to both committee meetings, the JNA and the, the FMP. Uh, we don't have a chance to hear what the public wants to say. It, it, it's, in the long run, if you're gonna do your jobs correctly, you need to get to both meetings so that you can hear the public speak and make a decision rather than coming in to the council, getting five signatures and hearing for the first time on what the public has to say and then make a, a decision. Should the committees be doing their work? Yes, they should. But should we as a group also be able to hear what the public has to say? I think that we do, and then take the two days to make our decision. Uh, I, I think we need to send this back. I, I hope that we would vote for referral. Thank you. Chair, recognize the... Thank you. Chair, recognize the council member from the first district. Thank you, Your Honor. All the more important reason to refer this back to JNA so we can have that discussion. The public never had a chance to be heard. This was added, the five council members was added at the Committee of the Whole. There was no notification, there was nothing on the website, there was nothing um, other than in the Tribune at the last minute um, and on your other news stations. Um, we need to get back to suggestions on how we can make it more efficient at our committee meetings and for the committee of the whole. The people need to be heard. They weren't heard at the committee of the whole. Um, and if you bring it back to JNA as a referral, I will guarantee you, you will have the public. I heard from a lot of people, even at the sign committee on Wednesday, um, or on Tuesday, I'm sorry, afternoon. They didn't have a chance to be heard on this. And I think by bringing it back, um, I. I feel very strongly it needs to be referred and I, I think you'll have the input then. Um, just come up with these ideas but get it referred and then we can come up with new legislation if need be. Thank you. Chair, recognize the council member from the seventh member from the fourth district. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to try to bring this discussion back around to Mr. Farmer's point that this was properly noticed and on our agenda in recent months to eliminate the public hearing not to eliminate Committee of the Whole, but to eliminate the public hearing from the Committee of the Whole. The public did have an opportunity to share their views on that with us. So repeating that process, 
I don't know how useful that would be. I do know that when I hear council members use terms like taking away the public's voice and eliminating public hearing, I'm, I'm very disappointed to hear that kind of inflammatory language come from the floor. I, I expect it from some members of the public, but not of the council. Um, this has never been about taking away the public's voice. We probably have one of the most inefficient, cumbersome political processes of any municipality in the Western world. People have been trying to change it for years without success. This is a step we can take in the right direction. People will still be able to speak before the council. If council members will make the commitment to come to both standing committees, they will hear those members of the public. And how do you know that the public won't actually be more apt to participate when we make it a little bit simpler and easy for them to come to us and speak? I hope you'll support this and give it a try for six months. If it doesn't work out, we'll go back to doing things the way we are now. Chair, sure, recognize the council. Is there further discussion on referral? We have a motion on the floor is to refer for 30 days. If there is no other discussion, please cast your votes. One vote. One, three, six, twelve, fifteen, and seventeen. The motion has failed. What is the pleasure of the council? The chair recognizes the council member from the fifteenth district. I, I wanted to support if you meant reconsideration. Did I still vote yes or no? You would have voted yes to support reconsideration. Yes or, or to referral. support referral, excuse me. We have voted. We we have voted on reconsideration. That's why we're discussing it. The chair recognizes a council member from the first district. I really think you need to give this a lot of thought. So I will postpone this uh, for 30 days until we can come up with a plan. I, I don't know that that's a motion, uh, Mr. I believe that's the same motion that was just on the floor. And if there's Okay, are you asking for a special meeting? A 30 day, uh, for postponed for 30 days for a special meeting um, would be appropriate. We need to have more discussion by the public and that's what we're here for. We represent the public, we keep forgetting that. We make our phone calls, you make your contacts, but we forget about the people. The people is who we represent and they have a right to be heard on this. So I can postpone this indefinitely, then it kills it. That's not the agenda here. I want to postpone it to a special date, and I can do that. Okay, is there a second for that motion? All right, motion is to postpone this for 30 days. Okay, if there's no discussion, to recognize a council member from the 9th district. We did get a second from a council member from the 6th district. Could you clarify that motion? You know, are you postponing it to a special meeting? And do you want to set the, the time next? Of that? I can postpone it according to Robert's rules of order to the next scheduled session. So. Okay, we'll uh, hear the city's attorney' opinion on this, Mr. City Attorney. I just want to make sure that the minutes properly reflect the motion being made. So what I'm hearing you say is that your motion to postpone definitely is to the next council meeting, therefore, therefore bypassing all the committee meetings, the subcommittee meetings of the council, going right to the next council meeting. So be, you, this will not be considered until this exact time next month in this exact type of same forum, as opposed to asking for a special meeting that is specifically 30 days out on this sole agenda topic. I guess my intent is to postpone it 
to the next session. Session would include the first JNA meeting. And then it would go through the other channels, correct? Right. The motion to refer and the I, motion to commit is the one that sends it to the subunits. That one had failed. Right. The motion postponed indefinitely, then, as I understand you stating, would be it's not specifically 30 days, but rather to the next regular council meeting, which therefore bypasses JNA, bypasses Committee of the Whole, and is just placed on the next common council agenda. That is not my intent. I want it the next scheduled sessions, which would be. The J and A. Then that that would be the same thing as a referral, which was just voted down. Then postpone though is different than a referral. It's postponing Robert's rule of order. I have the floor, Mr. Farmer. Thank you. Excuse me. Chair, recognize the council member from the tenth district. The motion is framed as not in order before the council. Um, it is, uh, as Stephen Maddy has uh, just revealed, it is, a, it is exactly the same as the motion we voted down. I ask the chair to either roll it out of order or I will appeal the decision of the chair to the body of the whole. Yeah, well, I'll allow the council member the, from the first district to you know, explain what you would like to do, but uh, I agree with the city attorney that if you want this to go to the subcommittee meetings, that's a motion to refer which was just made and was failed. If you want to postpone it and skip the subcommittee meetings, I'll recognize that motion uh, if we get a second for it. There needs to be more discussion. And I have read Robert's Rules of Order. You can postpone to a future session. Now, whether it's the Committee of the Whole or the j &A, why couldn't we have a special j and &E meeting the same night as the Committee of the Whole for the discussion to take place? By then, we would have someone come up with some ideas on how we can move forward in a more efficient, efficient, capitalize that, process. There is nothing wrong with postponing this to the next Committee of the Whole evening with a special meeting of the j and &E. the city attorney's opinion on that the opinion of the legal department is that if you wish to do a postpone to a definite period of time there's two ways that that can occur the first way and you have to distinguish it from a motion to reconsider which is I mean a motion to refer the motion to refer sends it through all the subunits of the Common Council therefore a motion to postpone definitely puts it to a specific meeting that specific meeting would be the next Common Council meeting if the 30 days is referenced to mean specifically the next session. And the next session of the actual common council meeting would be uh, whatever that date is in uh, the next month for the actual regular common council meeting. The other option for the postpone definitely is if you take the postponement for 30 days literally, meaning that whatever day 30 is from today, that would be a special common council meeting on this specific topic. Can she postpone it to a special subcommittee meeting? In the opinion of the legal department, it, you have the, the jurisdiction right now is in the common council. If you, can, if you want to refer it, that would be a referral or a commitment that's the same motion that sends it to a different committee. You could create a separate or a new committee to send it to, but in that case, that motion has already failed and the postponement definitely, definitely, or postponement definitely keeps it in the same governing body, which is the Common Council. All right. Well, you can postpone this to the next council meeting, but you cannot postpone it to a committee meeting. So I can't do it indefinitely. I have to have a specific date. Is that correct, Mr. Maddy? Postpone indefinitely means I'm going to kill it, and that's not my intent. It's correct. A postpone indefinite is a motion to kill the legislation. In this case, what I heard you say was a postpone for 30 days, and that's, what the, that's why I had asked the question whether you were asking for a specific common council meeting, specifically 30 days from today's date, or whether the 30-day reference was merely meant the next regular common council meeting where it may or may not be exactly 30 days away. 
then I'll, I'll postpone it to the next uh, council meeting for a special session. Thank you. Is there a second for that? All right, motion on the floor is to postpone this to the next common council meetings. Uh, thereby, it will skip any subcommittee meetings and go straight to this uh, common council meeting. Is there discussion on the motion to postpone? If there is none, would you like to speak on the motion to postpone? The city attorney took care of everything I wanted to say. It is the practice around here when you postpone, it goes to the next regular meeting. It doesn't happen very often, but in the last two years, we did have one that was postponed, and it went to the regular council meeting, not to the standing committees. Thank All you. Right, motion on the floor is to postpone for 30 days. The chair will recognize a council member from the 17th district. If, if we do this, would that prohibit, <clears throat> and I, I don't know if he wants to do this or not, but if Mr. Manninger wanted to write something up and have it read in, it couldn't be ready. That'd be it in tonight, wouldn't it? I'm still trying to figure out how the, how his idea gets the light of day. Is is that foolish for me to think it's even possible for his idea to get the light of day? Well, I mean, he can get the light of day at any point. He could write up a caption tonight and you know read it in at the end of the meeting. Um, you know, if this is postponed for 30 days, he can, you know, come up with an amendment to this uh, at the next meeting uh, to change it. You know, he can kill this. He can write up new legislation. Uh, there are any number of options. Thank you. The chair recognizes the council president. I, I, thank you. I just want to clarify that in relation to that particular motion, if it's referred to a council meeting, there is no, or postponed to the next council meeting, there will be no public hearings in relation to it. So the purpose of the motion, it, uh, which I understand the purpose to be, is to have public input, then the, uh, it just isn't going to work. The chair recognizes the council member from the first district. Thank you. Um, in response to that, we have had public hearings at council meetings. I know there's a few here that don't um, like extra meetings, but we have had um, reference to a special meeting and we can make a vote to have the public be heard that evening. You know, I guess I would have preferred it to the go, to go to the committee of the whole, but if that is what um, our attorney said, could not be done, then it certainly, you know, is appropriate at the council meeting, but I'm hoping to have a, a special meeting before. Let me remind you, how many short circuits were there this month? Three. We had short, three short circuits on development agreements and a TIF. So who's to say uh, Council Member Mettinger couldn't come up with a short circuit? Oh, I think all you need is, what, five signatures? So. You know, if you got some ideas, put them together. But I think this is this is talk about the light of day. I think we've turned the lights off. Unfortunately, thank you. There is no further discussion on this motion to postpone to the next regular meeting of the Common Council. Please cast your votes. A yes, will postpone this to the next regular meeting of the Common Council. A no vote will not. One, three, six, and 15. Motion has failed. What is the pleasure of the council in regard to this item? The chair recognizes a council member from the first district. Um, that should have been taken out. The chair recognizes a council member from the 14th district. I'll move to amend the legislation removing the five signatures requirement and include public hearing on all items beginning at each si regular city council meeting monthly. It's um, with no council uh, debate or vote. Um, following the public hearings, we would then begin our regular monthly city council meeting as scheduled. Second. All right, motion on the floor is to amend uh, to allow a public hearing uh, for all items on the agenda. Is there discussion on the motion? If there is none, Chair, recognize a council member from the 10th district. 
hopefully it takes two thirds ultimately for that to pass. I think um, that's putting an awful lot on Thursday night, Mr. Mettinger. Um, I realize everybody wants to accommodate you here, um, but I, I have been here when public hearings took us to two in the morning and we began our regular committee of the whole then. Um, and that's one of the reasons it was on a separate night. Uh, public hearings have been kind of light as of late uh, by comparison, um, but Mr. Sequist was also here uh, reporting on these meetings when we used to routinely run on Tuesday night to two to three in the morning. Uh, and if that ever were to do, uh, that, that just makes it to where you're then doing the important stuff when you can hardly stay awake. Chair, I recognize a council member from the 9th District. Thank you, Your Honor. What Council Member Menninger is proposing is public hearing only. There would be no discussion among the council members except obviously questions for the, uh, the speakers. There would, be, there would also be no votes. So if you look at in one hour's time conceivably, and each person gets three minutes, conceivably you could get through 20 speakers. I, I, I don't think that this is going to this is going to put us in the wee hours of the morning. At the most, I could see this will uh, make our visit on the second Thursday of the month, the regular meeting night, maybe an hour extra. So I still think this is a great plan. So I'm going to vote for the amendment. Thank you. Just, just for clarification, I thought Mr. Manninger said this, but I want to be sure. So if, if, if this plan uh, follows through with obviously the sunset, there would not be a committee of the whole meeting on Tuesdays. Essentially, there'd be public hearings and then a council meeting on Thursday. That's is correct. That, is that correct? Okay, thank you. Four, eight, and 10. The motion is carried. Is there further discussion on this legislation as it has been amended? The chair will recognize the council member from the 10th district. Well, I'm just going to make the plea that um, I think what we did last month has value and that we would give it a try. Uh, Mr. Mettinger's thing, uh, proposal is certainly an alternative and if what we find, uh, if, if he's right or Mrs. Richmond is right and it doesn't work, my goodness, in February or March we could institute Mr. Mettinger's alternative plan. We don't have to wait till June. June's just an automatic date. But I think what we did was good um, and it puts us, uh, we still have more public hearings uh, than probably any other municipality in the state of Wisconsin, uh, even if we leave this as we left it last month. So I hope that uh, we'll stick with that. Um, it is worthy of a try. Um, I'm nearing the end of my tenure here, so I don't have a lot of skin in this game. Uh, those of you who are going to be here for a good, some of you will be here for 10 or 15 years. Uh, and uh, so I think in the end, you'll want very much for us to have uh, at least tried this, and if it's found wanting, uh, then we can change it not try and leave what we placed last month. All right, a motion on the floor is to adopt this uh, resolution as it has been amended. And just to clarify, Mr. City Attorney, um, if, this is not, if this is not passed tonight, uh, what's the outcome? Does the outcome from last month still stand? With a motion to reconsider, uh, the the legislation is brought back as if it had not been adopted. So if the motion here fails, then the entire legislation fails. Okay. Um, Chair, recognize the council member from the 10th district. Are you saying then that by reconsideration, a simple majority vote, he undoes a two-thirds vote last month? Yes. Doesn't it take two-thirds to change the rule? takes two-thirds to change a rule. Didn't we pass a rule last month? But you also adopted a reconsideration. You have in your rules the, op the option to do a reconsideration. Right, but wouldn't it take two-thirds then to change the rule under reconsideration because this is substantially different. This is very different now than from what we adopted last month. We should, this certainly would take two-thirds to adopt. It's completely different legislation now. The opinion of the legal department, according to your rules, is that you have the ability to reconsider any previous legislation by majority vote. I would agree. And in this particular circumstance, that's what happened. There was a majority vote to reconsider the previous legislation. I agree. And what would happen then is if, 
you would, under the opinion of the legal department, we don't have the final say in this. The chair would have to make a ruling. If you disagree with the ruling from the chair, then you have the ability to do a motion to appeal that ruling to determine ultimately what the rule is for this body. But you see the conundrum here because his amendment makes it substantially new legislation, a new rule, and you're now putting us in a, your ruling is saying that a mere majority adopts the rule that uh, later can only be repealed by two thirds. It doesn't make sense. I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, too, I have to live by the rules that this body creates, and I have to interpret them based on the rules and the precedent that you've established in the past. I can give an opinion, and then ultimately the chair or the presiding officer can decide whether to follow that opinion or give a different ruling, and if the body does not like the ultimate ruling from the chair, you have the motion to appeal to establish the definitive process and precedence for this body. Well, I've, you know, I, um, I don't want to get into a fight here. I just find it incongruous, there's a word for you, uh, that we're now changing a rule by simple majority vote. I understand what you're saying. A brand I agree. New rule. I don't want to get in an argument with you. I'm just giving the opinion of the legal And department. we're instituting a brand new rule, never before considered, never ever having had a public hearing, ever, anywhere, and we're going to do it on simple majority vote. This is something only Mrs. Richmond could have dreamed up. <laughs> All right, Mr. Council Member from the third district, would you like to speak on the motion? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you know, I think the main goal of the people that were in opposition was to keep the public's voice there. And I think that this does do that. And it's still under a six month sunset clause, which at that point you can decide that it works or it doesn't work and you can go back to the way it was. You're keeping the voice in there of the public. I will support that and I ask everybody else to too. Thank you. All right, motion on the floor is to adopt this uh, resolution as it has been amended. If there is no discussion, the chair recognizes the council member from the 10th district. Uh, I, that's nice. I don't, I don't think this is my question. I, 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 and I think you all see the contradictory nature of what Mr. Matty has just said. And I, I am desirous. I don't think what I'm going to do here is going to pass, but I do think somewhere along the line, somebody has to say that if you're going to change a rule, it's two thirds. You just can't backdoor it and say, because by Mr. Maddie's interpretation, I could come in with a motion to rescind any rule we have next month, which is a simple majority vote, and we'd be on our way. And that's not how it works, okay? Um, he, I don't know where and how he came up with this. This is why I asked about it in the very beginning, and I was definitely led to believe in the very beginning it would take two-thirds. Um, so I'm going to ask the chair for a ruling as to whether this roll call takes two-thirds for a change in the rules, because it is a change in the rules from what we adopted last month. Um, then if the chair rules one way or the other, uh, I'll probably appeal the decision of the chair to the body as a whole. I really doubt if that's going to pass because the majority wants Mr. Mettinger's thing. And as my father used to counsel me, the majority gets to do the damn well what they want. It's regrettable. And that's the purpose of the rules is to keep the majority in check. But I really don't think this watershed moment should occur without at least some kind of protest. Uh, so I'm going to ask the chair for a ruling. Well, my ruling is that if this receives a uh, two-thirds majority vote, uh, obviously uh, the resolution will be adopted as it has been amended. Uh, if it does not receive the two-thirds majority, uh, it will not be adopted. And we have no legislation. That's correct. That's correct. The chair will recognize the council member from the first district. So, Your Honor, what you're saying is you're disagreeing with what our city attorney no. just said? No. Pardon me? No, my ruling is that I agree with the opinion of the city attorney. As he stated, the majority. That's correct. Okay, because I heard you say two-thirds, so. That's correct. It will require a two-thirds vote to adopt but if it does not I heard him say something about the majority vote, not two-thirds. The majority vote allowed you to reconsider this item. We already reconsidered it. That's correct. Okay, the chair recognizes the council member for the 10th we, I want to point this out. We can't afford public hearings on Thursday night. We want to point this out. We can't afford public hearings on Thursday night. We want to point this out. We can't afford public hearings on Thursday night. We can't handle a simple rule change in an hour's time. You know, we're not even done here. The, you're saying that if, if there isn't an affirmative vote 
on this rule change of two thirds, it does not pass. That's correct. And then my next question would be, I would interpret that, then the rule most recently passed would still be in effect because the legislation to alter it failed. It would be like any other change. If you came in with a rule change to make it that we we're gonna meet on the fifth Wednesday of the month, it might get 50%, but it didn't get two thirds, so thus it failed and you're still meeting on whatever Thursday of the month it would be. Well, my ruling is that if this does not receive a two thirds majority vote, that we don't have uh, the legislation that was adopted last month. We what? That's correct. We do not have it, that it is not in I see. Okay. Well, then I'm going, to, um, I'm going to appeal the decision of the chair to the body of the whole. I fully expect that to fail, but I really find it outrageous uh, that, that we're now amending rules with 50%. Okay, the motion on the floor is to appeal the ruling of the chair on this item. Uh, as many as are in favor of the ruling of the chair, uh, you'll vote yes. If you are not in favor of the ruling of the chair, you'll vote no. Chair, recognize the council president. It, thank you. I, it, it, we sure have got ourselves into a conundrum here tonight. And I think, uh, and I think that Everybody really has the best intent here. We're just struggling with how to get to where we really need to be. And uh, what, what troubles me about it is that what's happening is we're trying to create legislation on the run, which is kind of how the whole thing happened in the first case, where the idea that um, the committee of the whole be ab abolished um, came about somewhat in that way also. Um, it seems to me, and I just, I really just don't know how to get there, but I believe that we are sincere in wanting to give the public the opportunity to participate in the process. But by killing the, the original legislation, we are not we're not achieving anything. We are back to square one. It has happened in, a, in an ordinary way. And I still believe that we all want the best and we want the public to be able to participate in discussion. What's, what's really we're struggling with now is because of the confusion or in relation to the two, uh, three fifths or four fifths and um, majority, that we have, um, we have really kind of slid into a situation that isn't good in any case, because at this stage it's very clear that there is a sentiment that the public should have the opportunity to par uh, participate in public hearings. That has been my position all the way along the line that they should. But adopting a change on the fly, which is basically what we're doing, is not helping the whole situation particularly either. We've run into challenges with our own rules because of the way that um, the, there's a quirk there. Uh, I wish I had a solution as to how to salvage this, that we do not um, have the full legislation die and at the same time um, have an opportunity for the public to have input and for all of us to really can seriously consider what would be the best thing to do. Um, clearly we need, we need legislation, new legislation in relation to public hearings. How we get there has been awfully, awfully messy. And um, I don't know whether even, whether there is any way of mending it tonight. We're, we've got ourselves into such a quagmire here. Um, basically, as I understand it now, either we vote to have the, res yeah, I, I'm even confused at this stage, 
if we vote uh, a yes or no simple majority on this, what, where are we at? Yeah, we're going to get the new rule. If we don't vote 50, per, uh, so that changes the rule. I don't know. It's just somehow it, it would, if we could, I, at this stage I really think that we do need a referral on it, but can we do the referral, can, can we do the referral and keep the um, e existing legislation alive? Well, right now we're considering an appeal of the ruling of the chair, so is there any further discussion on the appeal of the ruling of the chair? The chair recognizes a council member from the 17th district. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to make sure that <clears throat> I'm understanding your position, because on the one hand, I thought I heard you say you agreed with the city attorney, but on the other hand, I thought I heard you say it would not pass without a two-thirds majority. So the two-thirds majority, if you're requiring that, and I personally don't have a big problem with it, but if you're requiring that, that's not the same thing as the attorney said, I don't believe. That is the same thing that the attorney said, and we can hear from him. Uh, the attorney ruled that to reconsider, it takes a simple majority vote, uh, but it still requires a two-thirds majority vote to ultimately adopt. So uh, Council Member Farmer is right that, in effect, you are changing a council rule with a simple majority vote, but you know, our rules as they're currently writ, uh, I you know, agree with the opinion of the city attorney, uh, allow us to do that. Okay, Mr. City Attorney, uh, would you like to offer an opinion on this? What's the question? <laughs> well, yeah, the council member from the 17th district uh, would like you to confirm uh, that my ruling is in accordance with uh, your opinion that it, this requires a two-thirds majority vote to be adopted. If it does not receive a two-thirds majority vote, this legislation is dead at that point. The opinion of the legal department was that after you had reconsidered the legislation, the legislation was back before you, therefore it was no longer effective in its primary form. That was the essence of a reconsideration. Therefore, if you had, did get this two-thirds supermajority, then the legislation as currently amended tonight would be effective. If you did not obtain the two-thirds supermajority, you would not have, you would not be able to go back to what was there previously in the previous month. To the step, to the uh, rule prior to any, the, the legislation currently at issue being introduced. And I concur with that opinion. Agree. I don't agree with Mr. Maddie's interpretation, but at least there's a thread of logic there. Um, I don't agree with it. Um, uh, I will, if Mrs. Richmond wants to refer, point out that this now would be eligible for referral because it is substantially different legislation because of Mr. Mettinger's amendment. And so if she really wanted to refer it, there's your golden opening. I the chair recognize the council member from the 14th district. And if there is no objection, I'll remove the uh, appeal from the floor. Uh, I see no objection. Uh, the appeal is removed from the floor. The chair recognizes the council member from the 14th district. Thank you. I just wanted to point it out. Unless we were all planning to not sign petitions for people to speak, this really isn't going to change anything from what we had, except it's going to take the burden off the public from having to get the five signatures. And we have heard from the public over the past month. So, um, un unless we were all planning to not sign those, or uh, not give our signatures, this is not going to be a drastic change. Thank you. The chair recognizes a council member from the first district. This is my golden opportunity, Your Honor. Um, I would like to refer this to the next council cycle. Second. Motion on the floor is to refer this for 30 days to the next council cycle. If there is no discussion on referral, the chair recognizes a council member from the ninth district. Uh, Your Honor. Um, Question for the city attorney: Is the referral is a is a referral in order here? Thank yes, you. 
Is there other discussion on the motion on the floor to refer for 30 days? If there is no discussion, please cast your votes. Four, five, nine, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. The motion is carried. 